Welcome to Breaking Par with Bernard Sheridan, the golf instruction podcast that helps you take control of your game. Now, here's your host, the founder of Par Breakers Golf Academy and certified Golf Channel Swing Fix instructor, Bernard Sheridan. All right, so uh, we have Jacob Bowden today. So welcome, Jacob. Thanks so much for being on Breaking Par. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. So um, before we went on the air, we had a lot of technical difficulties going on. And, um, and Jacob has been very gracious to, uh, to work through those with us. So I appreciate that. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved in, uh, in golf and what really made you begin to uh, decide that you wanted to uh, pursue this as a career. Um, I'd always played quite a few sports growing up. Um, I did play golf one year in high school, but I wasn't, uh, I was just an average golfer, probably back then under average. Cause I, for me at that point, it was my junior year shooting 50 on nine holes was the, the kind of the barometer of a good day. So if I broke a hundred on 18 holes, that was, that was good. Um, I remember starting out, I'd have like a one, 112, 116, 108. Um, so it, I certainly wasn't a child prodigy or anything. Um, but I always wanted to be sports was always a big interest for me. Um, I played basketball in college, a little, uh, division two school in St. Louis. Um, and I had a tryout with the twins for baseball. So I had a sports background, but golf was just kind of something I did a few times a year with my dad, mostly just kind of more for fun than anything. Um, but after college, um, neither basketball or baseball worked out on a professional level. So, um, I took a corporate job uh, as a computer engineer and I was thinking, well, I guess my sports days are done. (laughs) So off to the corporate world. And I didn't feel like I wanted to do that long term, but I didn't quite know which direction I wanted to go. So I literally, in an effort to try and figure out what I wanted to do, I literally wrote down a bucket list and just started checking things off the list. So, and a lot of them were sports related. So one was finish a marathon, another was do a triathlon and those kinds of things. And one of the things on the list was to go to every major sports event at least once. So like one Super Bowl, one World Series, one, you know, fill in the blank. And I was down in Atlanta, uh, doing some training for this corporate job uh, for a week. And the last day, Friday, um, I didn't have to teach or train people that day. It just got canceled for for some reason. I don't remember why. And at the time, the PGA Championship happened to be in Atlanta that week. I think it was 2001. It was the one that David Toms won uh, at Atlanta Athletic Club. And I was like, cool, this is my chance to go do a little bucket list thing. So I got myself a ticket and went over to the PGA Championship and if, you ever, if you've ever been to a tour event, um, there's galleries roped off along the sides of the fairways, and then once the players pass, they pull the ropes back and you can cross the fairway. And for whatever reason, at this particular crossing, I was the only person crossing. And so I got out to the middle of the fairway, and it was the strangest thing that happened. It was like all of a sudden this big light turned on. I felt lighter. Um, I don't know if you want to call it like divine inspiration, whatever you want to call it. But so I had this view of being the player in the fairway and looking down at the galleries on both sides. And I was like, all of a sudden I had this idea, like I could be a golfer, professional golfer. And at the time, 2001, I was born in 76. So I would have been 25 at the time. And I was maybe 14 handicap or so. I would gotten a little bit better in college and after college um, than I was in high school. Um, and I thought, okay, well golf, like I can be outside. Um, I can be in these, you know, beautifully landscaped, uh, uh, facilities, get to travel, um, get to play sports. And even though I'm not really good now, you can play at a high level professionally until you're, you know, 60, uh, as long as you're healthy and motivated. So I was like, okay, well I got, I got some time to, if I want to do this, that I could do this. And I molded over for about a year and I went to a couple other events. I went to a uh, U.S. women's open, mm-hmm. um, in Hutchinson, Kansas. And I went to a nationwide, uh, well, it was nationwide at the time. I yeah. think it was nationwide. 
a web.com tour event, uh, the one in Springfield, Missouri. I forget the name of it, but it's the one in Springfield, Missouri. might even have been uh, the Nike tour at that time, I think. It could have been, yeah. 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 It definitely wasn't the web.com tour. <laughs> Um, so I went to a few events just to make sure, like, am I crazy for thinking about trying to do this? And then fortunately, unfortunately, um, my uh, company got bought out um, a couple times. And, when that, you know, when that happens, thing, bosses change, mm. priorities change, and things just really went uh, south as far as my enjoyment of being at that particular job. And... So, I mean, that was the bad thing. But the good thing was it kind of was like, you know, I'm, I don't want to be 40 and then wonder what if later on down the road. So the job situation getting into that bad place kind of helped push me off the edge, uh, basically. And um, so I, I spent about six months putting together a plan. Um, I quit my job, moved out to California. Um, sorry, I got my little... That's okay. I have one, too. She's, friend. She's not... <laughs> She's not in the room today. Sometimes she tries to get on camera. It's it's funny, but uh, I you know I found that cats um, uh, they they like that. It's as soon as there's media coverage, they want to be involved. <laughs> and it's that old curiosity killed the cat, I guess. <laughs> I was hoping and praying that he would be quiet. And yeah, that's okay. Beforehand, and no problem. So We're in the real world here. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> So he, this isn't the first time he's made an appearance in one of my videos or, or recordings. There you go. Um, so anyway, I moved out to California, uh, and I had about 40000 saved up from the five years I was working in my corporate job. And I just, instead of working for a year, I, I just got up at uh, sunrise, went to the golf course, just practiced, practiced, practiced all day, went to bed, and just did that for a year. And uh, within six months, I'd cashed, cashed a check. Um, so then... Uh, you know, I, I ran out. Of, I ended up running out of money. I got good enough to turn pro, but then I'm so I, I made this huge, huge leap. But then, like I'm at the bottom of you know tour pros, and I, I basically I really couldn't survive uh, just as a tour professional. So I struggled for a number of years um, financially um, before I was able to kind of uh, break through and and start making a living in, in golf and. Um, you know, I'm not financially independent or anything, but I'm doing better than now than I was at my uh, computer engineering job. And I'm involved in uh, something I really enjoy now. And I've, I've had uh, good success with teaching and, and training people for swing speed. And I've competed in long drive and speed golf. And I've played about, at this point, probably about 30 different week-long tour events and made, uh, I'd have to check, maybe five or six cuts. Got some rounds in the 60s and 70s. So it's um, you know, it's been great. <laughs> no, that's a great story too. I mean, you know, it's funny how, um, like you said, that all of a sudden that light bulb went on and, um, and you're saying maybe divine intervention, probably I would say. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that when you have a calling and then you have the guts to follow it, I mean, I commend you on that. Uh, I kind of did the same thing. I mean, I started late in life in golf and and then got the calling and just decided, you know, I'm going to chase after this. And and it's worked out beyond my dreams. And, and if somebody would have told me back then, you're when you're in your 50s, you're going to be a successful golf professional, I would have said, there's no way I'm in the music industry with that. Why would I want to do that? But, um, right. but it's crazy how things happen. And, uh, that, that's a great story. So, so you're the bulk of what you're doing now is, are you doing mostly instruction or are you doing, um, you know, clinics, uh, or, or doing speaking engagements or what exactly is the bulk of what you're doing at the moment? Um, I, I'm involved in a really quite a bit large variety of things. Um, my main interest when I started was I just wanted to play. Um, but I, one, I ran out of my own money, uh, my own personal savings, and then I got in a little bit of debt and then I struggled for a while just to kind of stay afloat. Um, and I, I was really looking for sponsors right around the time of the financial crisis. So it was, 
I, I had little bits of success getting a sponsor for one tournament or two tournaments or something like that, but I, I didn't really get anything substantial. So, um, <clears throat> I, uh, in lieu of that, I decided a lot of people were asking me like, Hey, how did you improve so quickly? How did you start hitting the ball farther? Um, and, and I, I just had this idea like, Oh, maybe I should just make a little website about it. So I literally opened up a word document and typed golf <laughs> and then <laughs> that was how it got started. <laughs> and then I spent about three weeks, uh, writing about 80 pages of content. Um, I took it, uh, to a web developer and said, Hey, can you turn this into a website? And this was in 2007. And then, um, it turned into, uh, uh we launched in, it was about six months back and forth, you know, change this picture, move this text, all this kind of thing. Sure. And then we launched in October 2007, and by December 2007, I'd made the money back from the website. And then um, nowadays, it's probably the most significant uh, portion of my income, I guess, is, is this website. So it's primarily about swing speed training, how to physically train to be able to hit the ball farther. Um, and then there's just a handicap improving uh, aspect to it as well. We have several expert experts that... Um, that we get to provide uh, information on a monthly basis to people. Tom Lashon is our equipment guy. Jeff Mangum, uh, you're a putting zone instructor. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. So we, we have I Jeff Mangum. I know Mang Jeff well. <laughs> <laughs> we have Je Jeff as our putting expert. Uh, we have Adam Young as a, just a general all-around guy. No, Adam very well. Practice, too. nutrition. Like, he's, he's a really smart guy. And then um, myself just for general golf and for, um, uh, for distance and power training and – uh, so, so I have that, that website. Um, and then I also, uh, so I do that part time and then I, I play tournaments. I do pro ams, I do clinics, I, I teach lessons. I'll train people sometimes, uh, with on both golf and, um, swing speed training. Um, I write for, uh, golf works, golf WRX, mm -hmm. um, just a, ver a really a large variety of things. So, um, all things golf, though. <laughs> no, it sounds great, and it sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's it's nice to have your own brand and be able to be out there and doing what you love. And and uh, so when you when you have a, a student, or, or let's say, or you're doing a clinic, there's the appearance. There's so so visitor. for those who, who get the opportunity <laughs> to see on uh, on our YouTube channel, well, the cat just popped up there for the rest of you listening <laughs> on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. You don't have the uh, beauty of being able to see that, but a, but a nice black cat there looks real. <laughs> <laughs> so it's... So I guess he's crossing your path all the time, so it's not a problem. <laughs> well, he's he's back again. Yeah, so that's okay. That's fine. There he is. He's saying hi to everybody. <laughs> right. So um, so when you're when you have someone, do you, do you actually have students who come to you or who approach you and say, "Look, I'd like to do something." Um, let's say let's say that it was me, and I said, "Hey, you know, I." I want to build swing speed. What am I, you know, what can we do? And what, and what would you normally do, uh, to help a player do that? I'm, I'm largely internet based. So, uh, I don't have a, a home, home facility per se. Okay. So since I'm internet based, people usually find me on the internet. They'll send me an email or contact me through the website or Twitter or Facebook or whatever. And then, um, uh, I'll, uh, for, for in-person training, I'll either, sometimes it's over email, sometimes it's over video, Skype, stuff like this, or mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll, I'll travel to the, to the person or have them travel to me and we'll meet at some kind of facility or something. It, it, it really depends on the person and the situation, and the, the skills levels range from beginners to uh, tour professionals, so the, the, the whole, whole gamut of people. Um, as far as... So you're wanting to know like what what you can do as far as is training to increase your swing speed. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure everybody out in the audience, I <clears throat> I know everybody out in the audience is is hanging on every word that you're about to say because they're going to go like, well, this is great. I mean, like we got this we got this fine gentleman here who's going to let us give us a little bit of an idea as to how we can hit the ball farther. I mean, and there's there's nobody. Um, in the game of golf, who doesn't want to hit the ball farther? I mean, it's—I I don't know—I don't know who would not maybe 
Jamie says Salzlowski might not, but I think even he wants to hit it farther because then yeah. that way when he does these these uh, competitions, he can further himself from the com- from the from his competitors and and really never worry about losing a long drive championship again. Just be the Remax guy for life or whatever. Yeah, I've I've talked to Jamie before, and and yeah, I mean everyone. <laughs> we, we, uh, Jamie included wants more distance. Um, so as far as like hitting the ball far farther, um, I look at it like there's three ways to get more distance. One is through your technical stuff. So working with an instructor to hit the ball better. Sure. Um, second part is equipment fitting. Um, and this is really, uh, becoming a much more, what was this? <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Um, Equipment fitting, um, and this this is really uh, uh, becoming a much more um, people are becoming more aware that, that you need to, to to maximize your distance. You need to launch at a certain angle um, based on your swing speed, and then spin at a certain amount too. So you don't want to you know hit a moon ball and have it drop straight down, and you don't want to hit a little worm burner either. So there's an optimal launch angle um, and spin rate <clears throat> based on your club head speed that's going to get you the most amount of total distance or carry distance, depending on what you want. Um, so that's, a, a, a second thing that I look at as far as, um, and all of the long drive guys, all of the top long drive guys that I've talked to, they're all, they're all like optimizing their launch conditions and tour players are starting to do it more. You see it with a little bit of the track man video. So, um, you know, at the amateur level, uh, you know, certainly working on improving your technique to hit the ball more solid in the center of the club face more consistently, getting your driver fit to your swing to optimize your distance that way. Um, uh, hitting up on the ball. Uh, it, 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 there's a lot of different um, charts and graphs and stuff saying that, that you're going to get more distance at the same club at speed hitting up on it as opposed to hitting down on it. So hitting up on the ball, I guess that kind of falls under like a more of the technical aspects. Sure. So technical equipment. And then the third thing is like, okay, well, once you're hitting the ball pretty solid and you're optimized with your equipment, now what? Um, <clears throat> and this is something well, I, I call it swing speed training. Um, it, it, I wouldn't exactly call it golf fitness because swing speed training is more focused on just pure speed building. So it, it's it's uh, physically what can you do to train to be able to swing faster and. Every long, you know, again, at the, at the long, there's so much that can be learned from the guys that are in long drive. Um, every, every guy that I've talked to is working on their speed and being, get the, getting their body to be able to do what they do, but just faster. And so, so no one swings that fast naturally in their 130s or 140s. There's, there's, they're all training to be able to do that. Um, so that's something the tour professionals, Tour professionals aren't really onto that yet. That golf golf fitness is coming around, but um, as far as specifically building speed, that's still kind of coming around on the tour level and then also on the amateur level. Um, so what can you do? Uh, there's two main keys uh, in my research since I've been doing this over the years that are going to help you be able to swing faster. One is just practicing swinging faster. Uh, the only group that... Um, that really does this is long drivers tour players are starting to, you see it a little bit more with like the, the heavy clubs and the lighter clubs. Um, uh, but long drivers are really the only ones that are really just trying to swing faster. So, um, it sounds simple, but I mean, you know, if you want to get better playing the piano or whatever skill you want to do, you sit down and just start working on it. So it's the same with speed actually. So if you want to be able to swing faster, you need to try and go faster. Um, so that's one thing. It's just practicing swinging fast. The second thing is, uh, the, the practicing swinging fast is only going to take you so far. So it's great if you're starting to use just practicing swinging fast with a radar, with your driver or with, um, some type type of training aid, like a, a heavy club or a light club or a wind resistance training aid, like a swing fan or um, the, the parachute thing with that you can attach to the club. Um, but eventually just practicing swinging fast, you're gonna, you're gonna tap out with that. So what then? 
Um, the next thing to do, or you can do it at the same time and just kind of really cross train your swing is building golf swing specific strength. So, and most importantly to the strength of what you're, the muscles that you're using from the top of your backswing down to impact because everyone, whether you're Jamie Sadlowski or average PGA tour professional or, you know, senior lady or whatever, everyone's starting at zero at the top and then they're getting to whatever they are at impact. So, and, and long drive guys tend to be really, really strong, not necessarily big, but really strong. So yeah, cause Jamie really isn't that big of a guy. I mean, um, that, what I would consider a big guy I have seen. And, and another one too is, um, who, who was really big a few, a few years back. Uh, and, and his name escapes me now. Um, but, but he was another, um, Jason Zubek. Yep. So Jason wasn't a real big guy. I mean, he was, he was muscular, but he wasn't like this real tall, like six, four. Um, and then you see some guys who are like that. They're like six, you know, some of these long drive guys are like six, four, six, five, um, have a huge swing arc and are, you know, <clears throat> absolutely just annihilating the ball. Um, but, um, but that's true. Uh, uh, you don't have to be big, um, to be able to, cr- to be able to crush the ball. Some of the long drive guys are big. Uh, Mike Dobbin, for example, is six, eight, 300 pounds. So yeah, I that's mean, huge. <laughs> so there, there are big guys out there, but like Jamie, for example, I think he's five eleven, one seventy five. 175. Yeah. So, I mean, he's like normal on, I um, would, I would consider that like, nor, like middle of the road, normal, normal guy. Um, mm-hmm. most guys that you meet are somewhere between five, nine and five and six foot and uh weight wise or somewhere between 160 and 200 so mm-hmm. and he falls right in that category right now granted jamie is really flexible so length of the back there's a cor- correlation with length of the back swing and how far you hit it um you know a longer swing doesn't necessarily cause it's, it's the cause correlation kind of thing it doesn't uh, longer back swing doesn't necessarily cause you to hit it farther but Long drivers as a group compared to tour professionals compared to amateurs do have longer backswings. So Jamie gets some of his distance from that. But, you know, again, you don't have to be big, but you have to be strong. So in the gym, for example, if you do, uh, Jamie can do, as I recall, 480 pounds on hex bar deadlifts. So it's basically standing up, bending over, grabbing a bar with weight, and then just standing up with it sure so he, he can do 480 pounds 10 times so that to do that it takes really strong hands a really strong butt really strong lower back really strong hamstrings um and me when i for example with me when i was uh at my fastest i was also at my strongest so for me for example when i do a half squat i could do over 500 with a half squat um, with a deadlift or I, I prefer rack pulls. They're a little bit more applicable. Sure. Uh, like a half deadlift basically. So yep. you're using the part that you're really using in your golf swing. Um, I could do, I don't remember exactly. I'd have to look at my training notes, but it was over 400. So, and it, that didn't, you nec- again, know, again, that didn't necessarily mean big, but it meant strong. So your ability to call upon maximum strength for a short amount of time, so, uh, if you're looking at, uh, well, so in the gym, make it golf swing specific as, as close as you can to your golf swing, um, do heavy weights safely, <laughs> um, do them explosively, uh, do them low reps. So typically when you go into the gym, a trainer might have you do 10 reps of something, but, uh, if you go out on the golf course, you're not swing, 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 like 10 swings in a row, you're swinging, resting for a few minutes to get to the, your next shot or, or, you know, resting 20 seconds or whatever while you rake over another ball on the range. So it's, <clears throat> so it's more like power lifting than endurance type training. So sure. I'll literally do one or two reps, um, at a time and then, but do, uh, say six reps, six sets of that, six sure. sets of one or two reps. So low reps, uh, many yeah. sets, low reps, maybe not many sets, but, but low, low reps for sure. Re- do as much as you can one, one or two times, 
stop, give yourself a break, do it again. And you repeat that several times. Um, I usually don't, when I was training for, I don't compete in long drive now, but when I was training for it, I do maybe at most six reps. So it's not a lot of reps and you do it a couple times a week. So it's not something you want to do every day because uh, rest and relaxation is important too and rest and recovery. So, uh, But you, say you do it on Monday and then you give yourself a couple days off, do it again on Thursday and then just each workout, try and do five pounds more, two pounds more, just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And over time, you can make your golf swing muscles really, really strong. Um, so those are the two main keys to swing speed training, practicing swinging fast and then making your golf swing muscles really strong. Not big, but just really strong. Sure. So do you think that the um, like the deadlift or, the, or what you were calling a pull, um, that, do you think that that is really um, giving you the opportunity to create more ground – explosive ground force um on the downswing uh because because those muscles are so much stronger that you can really i know you're pushing against the ground and and uh you know to to, to explode through the ball to create more power uh that, do you think that that that's a result of that uh of that type of lifting is it gives you more ground force it helps yeah so i mean it you know if you can go from 150 pounds with a rack pull and then over several months get yourself up to 250 you're you're able to move more weight quickly um so you you know it, that's definitely going to apply to what you can as far as you know pushing into the ground uh, ground force reactions um you can that'll definitely apply for sure now you mentioned um uh you know working on trying to swing faster um, and practicing swinging faster. So uh, for a session for, for – because um, I think that what we'll find is that uh, there's a lot of senior players out there and, and senior players who – out there in Impact Nation who listen to our show. And, and um, uh, I don't think they're going to be doing a lot of dead lifting um, to, just because of their age. They might be 60, 70 years old. Um, so so those, those folks are probably going to work more – try to work on that but also work more on actually trying to practice what you said is trying to swing faster um would you do you feel that it's better for them to use something that's weighted in that situation or do you think that it's better i've seen all different kinds of things i mean i've actually seen players um use like a uh, alignment stick and just try to swing that thing as fast as they can, and that's and there's it's not even a club; it's just a super light, you know, stick that they're and they might be swinging it like 10, 15 times in a row, as and whipping it through as fast as they possibly can to build that those small muscle um, speed through release and and things like that. Um, and and if they do that, uh, what I'm asking here is. Uh, for our older players and even for younger players, uh, how how many times, how many reps should they be doing that? How many sets should they be doing that? Should they be going light? Should they be going heavy? What have you found uh, works best for the majority of people that you're working with? Yeah, so you know, like you mentioned, not everyone is going to have a gym membership or want to go in and do that type of stuff. So there's there's different levels of how hard you want to push yourself and and the types of things that you want to do um so you know at, at swingman golf for example we have several several levels of here's something for the weekend golfer senior golfer that kind of thing that doesn't really have too much time that just wants to put in a little bit of work that um uh, will still get some results and then if you have a little bit more time a little bit more motivation you can do other things but at a basic level um, you and I both have written articles for GolfWorks. Um, I've got a couple articles up there right now that if people want to check out, they could see something along those lines at, at, a, at a more basic level. So one, <clears throat> uh, getting a swing speed radar or some type of thing that can measure your speed. Uh, that generally, when, when people have radars, they, get, they seem to get better results because the immediate feedback that you get and you can – you can see that you're improving or, or you're like, oh, okay, maybe it, I didn't quite really push myself. So it, it makes sure you're pushing. Your, it's, it's great feedback. So get a radar. 
and then w- practicing swinging fast maybe twice a week, 30 reps or so. So not a lot. It doesn't take a lot of time. Um, and you can work with your driver or really anything, I guess, at this at a basic level. So if, if you want to do swing the, the, the little alignment sticks or if you have a baseball bat um, and, and swing that like a golf club, really I, the main thing is just that you're working on your speed. Um, so take 30 reps of whatever you want to use to practice swinging fast. Um, do that. And then <clears throat> in this golf work uh, article, for example, there's, you can get some, uh, resistance bands and do, uh, downswing isometrics. So isometrics are like, say when you push against something really hard, you're not moving, but you're exerting a lot of effort. So you can put some bands up behind you, go to the top of your backswing and hold some bands uh, at the top of your backswing with two hands, hold as much resistance as you can for eight to 10 seconds, and then position them uh, up high, pull down about halfway down, and then position them low, and then pull the impact. Uh, So three positions, uh, mimicking your downswing, just some basic resistance bands. Do as much as you can while holding good good golf posture. Um, eight to ten seconds each. And then after you've done two hand, do right hand only, left hand only, right hand only, left hand only, right hand only, left hand only. And you'll work that doing that'll work your body in different ways. Typically with two hands, people really feel it kind of core uh, lower body stability. Um, Right hand only is going to work your 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 throwing type uh, uh, pushing uh, type muscles, and then left hand only or lead arm only is going to work your your pulling type muscles. So it it it, it kind of attacks your golf swing in different ways. So if you practice swinging fast, something thirty t- thirty reps twice a week, and then you do these band isometrics um, also twice a week. Uh, and then each week you try and do a little bit more resistance, do a little bit more resistance, do a little bit more resistance. And over the course of a month, it's actually pretty easy to put on 12 or 16 miles an hour just by doing that. Just by, since no, virtually no one except long drivers work on their speed. So just practicing it a little bit and working on your golf downswing strength with something like band isometrics, you can get a nice little boost to speed in a relatively short amount of time. So. Um, and, and that's something that the average golfer can do at home. Seniors can do it. Um, juniors, I would say once you juniors that are teenagers, um, high school age, they can do something like that. Uh, it really works across the board, um, uh, with skill level juniors, women, seniors, tour professionals, even I've even had some long drive guys do that and they get a bump, be speed, uh, speed bump as well. So, uh, and it's something that doesn't really take a long time to do. Um, might take you 10 or 15 minutes. So do that twice a week. And you don't need to go to a golf course or a driving range to be able to do that. If you got room to swing at home in your backyard or in a garage or something, then that's all you need to be able to practice swinging fast. And then the, the resistance bands, <clears throat> you can buy a little 5 or $10 doorstop to attach the bands into a door so you can do them at home or at your hotel if you're traveling or really anywhere. So, uh, that, that, that's an example of a simple routine that, um, really anyone can do that. You can really get a nice little boost of boost of speed out of. That's great. That's some real valuable information that I'm sure they're going to, uh, that are all our listeners are definitely going to try. I, I'm, I'm sure they will. So for uh, we're kind of running down the wire here. So so before we go, what what I would like to do is get some uh, contact information so that our listeners can go to your site and really find out as much as possible. And then maybe if they would like to work with you over the web or do a Skype or like we're doing here, um, what's what's the best way for them to get in touch? Contact info wise, um, the, the best place to start, I think is just, um, swingman golf, uh, swingmangolf.com. Um, it has a lot of information up on web website. So, um, 
you know, I, I only have so much time in a day, so I can only work with a certain amount, you know, a certain amount of people. So, the the web is a great way for for you to get started and get a base knowledge of of what's going on, and then you know, see how far you can take it on your own. And then um, beyond that, <clears throat> you know, if you want to work with me in person, um, then you can contact me through the Swingman Golf website uh, or um, my uh, personal website, um, jacobbowden.com. Um, and it's J-A-A-C-O-B. Um, I'm the only Jacob with two A's in the golf industry. So if you just search Jacob with two A's um, in golf, you, you'll find me. So uh, email is what I usually do most. Um, then probably Facebook. And then Twitter, not some, but not as much. Uh, and then a little bit of LinkedIn as well. So those are the main e- – email, email through the website is probably the – the easiest way to find me I, either website sure great well jacob thank you so much for being with us and uh being patient with us for the slight technical difficulties we were having before we went on the air i really appreciate that and uh, we wish you all the best and what we always say in parting here is do your best to keep it in the short grass i'm sure you're doing that anyway yes <laughs> thanks for having me <laughs> all right great take care You've been listening to Breaking Par with Bernard Sheridan, the only weekly golf instructional podcast that helps you take control of your game. Need help with a part of your game? Email us at parbreakers at gmail.com and we will cover your topic in a future show. You can also follow us on Twitter at parbreakers. For more tips and videos to help your game, go to www.parbreakers.com where you learn to take control of your game.